Solomon and my boy Adam Karnaki from uh, Post Post from Post Bubble. I mean, the only two sparring partners I really had. Also, uh, middleweight known as Allen. Um, you know, I had to use what I only had, what I was in, in, in front of me. You know, you gotta understand. These guys are calling me out as I'm fighting. You know, there's nobody else that wants to fight me. You know, even when I fought Joe Washington, he had a full camp. He came out of Klitschko camp, training for Vladimir, training with Vladimir to help AJ. You know, he had a full camp to get ready for me. Instead of him fighting, you know, I had a three weeks notice when he fought, you know, Wilder. You know, and went five rounds with Wilder, giving him help, and I beat him up every round. You got Morris Watt, he fought, fought Pavekin on like two, three weeks notice, you know, and uh, gave Pavekin work for his money, and I stopped him earlier. Then we have this guy here, Johan Dupas, tough brother. He, only, he took a fight with Pavekin on 48 hours notice. 48 hours notice, he took a, a time limit against a guy that was calling on PEDs and still went out there and gave his best, even though he got stopped by Pavekin on 40 hours notice. These guys I'm fighting have full camps, eight weeks. Uh, 12 weeks, full camps, they're getting ready for me, and I'm still making it look pretty good. You know, so I want guys, you know, give me my respect. You know, I'm 300 pounds, and I'm moving, I'm doing what I'm doing, I'm having fun in there. So like I said, if Asia want to come to Brooklyn, I will gladly accept, and I will run him in the ground. His condition ain't better than mine, his head movement ain't better than mine, and I got power, you know what I mean? I got power, trust me, it's there. But some guys, you just can't get out the way you want, and you gotta go back to boxing, what boxing is about, you know, it's getting the win, and um, having fun, you know, that's what I can I say, you know, like I said, I'm not, I don't got no jokes to crack in that right now. You know, but uh, Anthony Dixon, Dixon and Josh will come get this work all day. I'm ready to toast the English muffin. We cook french fries tonight, so English muffins next time. <laughs> uh, man, this, uh, shout out to my team, uh, my coaches, uh, Harry Sosa, uh, my cousin Jamal, Michael, my team, uh, you know, all my boys that came out, uh, you know, can watch my back, you know, a lot of things been going on rough in New York, maybe, so. And I wasn't taking no chances, and I brought my squad out with me, man, because I'm not risking nothing. I worked too hard to get here for somebody else's mistake, you know. So I'm glad for all my boys that came out with me, man. And, uh, you know, Fag, Ed, uh, big cousin in the back, you know, looking like he's middle linebacker on defense. You think I'm big, he's big. See him right there, the guy with the back, he's huge. Imagine running into you. So thanks everybody for coming out, man. Uh, it was dope. Any questions? You mentioned before that you wanted this fight to go four to five rounds and you wanted a 19 knockout. Do you feel you missed any opportunities for a knockout? Oh yeah, most definitely. I think I, I think what it was, um, I hit him with some really good body shots and I kind of took my foot off the gas because I wasn't too sure if he was hurt, but it was time like him with a body shot, I'm going, ugh. And he was, people were telling me he's icing his body in the middle of the rounds. But like I said before, you know, he was a tough guy. Um, every time I relax and focus and use my jab, I was catching him clean, the body shot from there. But like I said, it's an improvement. It's a better improvement than my last fight. And um, I'm still 20 pounds bigger, and I'm only, only going to get better. It's only going to get better, you know. And he's a tough guy, a guy, and, um, you know, went 12 rounds. I need the 12 rounds, though. Show people I can go 12 rounds. Coach Anthony here with Behind the Gloves. Uh, congratulations on your, on your performance. Now, I got a question from a strategic standpoint. Mm -hmm. I seen you was throwing the right hand to the body a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the game plan was to throw the right hand to the body and get him to drop that left elbow so you could come with the overhand right. I've seen Correct. you attempt that a few times. Correct. I got two questions, so I'll just let you go ahead and answer that. Um, the main thing was working a lot. We went back to the basics in boxing. Jabs to the body, fake jabs, left foot, right hand to the body, touch him, touch him, break it, bring his hands down. And a couple of times it worked. Um, like I said, I think I need to go back and get my footwork back a little faster. My footwork was there, but it kind of um, slowed down as rounds went. I said, like I said before, a lot better than my last performance. It made me just go back to the drum board and continue off of those things. Because I had some really good sparring. Uh, my jab was on point better than the last fight. So it's going back to the basics and having fun with it, man. Like I said, this fight was actually a fun fight for me. It was fun. Do I just gave me 12 rounds that I need to see? I, I know I can go anyway, but show the fans. And I got good body shots. Like I said, it's all about improvement. And I'm, I, I know he's, he's a tough component. And I'm no way discouraged. I know a lot of guys can't go 12 rounds with him and look that good. And he had a full camp. Full camp, not no 48 hours, not no four weeks like a Deontay fight, had a full camp over 10 weeks. And, 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 and that's what, that was another point. You looked very good in the first couple rounds. It looked mm -hmm. like in the middle round you started to get a little gassed. I don't know if you was gassed, but it kind of looked like you were getting caught a little bit with uppercuts and shots yeah. and you weren't getting touched within the first couple rounds. Correct. Were you getting tired? No, I wasn't getting tired. What happened was a little frustration because I know I wanted to get him out there kind of bad. And I know I hurt him, but I just couldn't put the combination on one together. So you know what, let me reset, give myself like a half a round around. Breathe, look for the open, let me see what I got. And it's all about, it's all about, you know, adjusting on the fly. So I gave myself a round to adjust, 
You know, let me see what I got in front of me. And then from there, my corner tools go back to jab. You can't get them out there. They put pressure on them and back them up and get these rounds in. That's what happened. This, I just on the fly. Instead of going for the knockout, just add accumulation of punches and beat them up, make them, make them curve. All right, so my last question is, who do you want next, man? I mean, um, listen, like I said before, you know, Eddie Hearn made promises, confidence to other fighters. Um, let's get this straight. I am not signed with matchroom boxing at Eddie Hearn. Let's get that clarified for the 100 times. Another reporter reports that, I'm gonna come see you personally. I am have my own promotional company. I'm my own boss. I'm Big Baby Promotions, and this is my partner, Salida Promotions. Okay, Team Hummins and Cheeseburgers all day. Remember that. Okay, um, we have a deal with HBO, and it was in their interest to help build my profile on the Eddie Hearn undercard, and that's what you have here. Uh, we are not signed with Eddie Hearn. We have our own thing going on, but it was in the best interest that we help go on Eddie Hearn card to help build my profile. That's all that is. Um, of course we want the AJ fight. You know, Eddie Hearn's been talking a lot that AJ's gonna come to Brooklyn, he's gonna do this and do that. I'm not gonna sit here and get on my knees and beg. That's not New Yorkers, that's like, we work hard, we earn our shot. If you're gonna bring New York, I would gladly bust his mind. If not, we have Chagayev in Germany, who has no TV, but he has a belt. Now we could probably make that happen when I resign with HBO, because we have been negotiating again, and bring Chagayev over here in the main event. Manuel Char, Manuel Char, Manuel Char. You know, that'd be a great, be a headline of great New York. Me and him versus the, 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 the German dude, and we can headline out in New York. You know, that'd be my next best option if Eddie Hearn doesn't want to be Andy Joshua. I'm not going to beg for it. I'm here. If you're going to put his money where his mouth is, let's make it happen. If not, you're not going to sell me a dream like you did Ortiz and Dylan White and all the other guys. I'm not going to do that. Cool? Good evening. Um, congratulations on your victory. Um, my name is Yang. I represent NY Mindset. Um, coming into the fight, you was 304 pounds. Mm -hmm. Um, do you think going into fighting Joshua or Deontay Wilder, do you think you can come in at that weight and be effective? Um, like I said before, my main thing is adjusting and see how camp goes. And my promise come through the four pounds? I don't think so, because I'm constantly training. Like I said, my main focus for this fight was bulking back up, getting my strength back and feel comfortable with my weight. So we got up pretty high pretty fast, and I had to bring it down gradually, not killing myself trying to make a weight. As you can see, my performance was a lot better at 304 than 280-something. So like I said, I'm, I'm right back in the gym Monday. We getting weights, you know what I mean? It's still your set. That's how we say in the gym, man. By Monday, I'm back on the weight training, you know what I mean? So um, we're going to continue training, still keep my cards, still do my kickboxing, my MMA, and um, just bring the weight down gradually and try to keep my strength, you know. I got time, so I'm going to go back to the footage, look at it, see what I need to improve on. And to me, I think all I, I think the main thing for me is footwork. I think once my feet keep moving and my head is moving, I beat every one of these guys. It may not stand still if you notice. A couple times he caught me some good shots because I stood, I stood there and didn't pop my jab. Like I said before, I took 11 months off. I took three fights against good guys. You know, good guys. So the main thing is going back to the drawing board, look at the footage, and um, put some James Brown on and get cooking. <laughs> what are you doing with the MMA training? Um, as you know, my, my background is uh, Muay Thai kickboxing. Um, there's a great martial arts school out in, um, in, in Florida where I'm looking to um, get a place out there. Man. There's a lot of good MMA fighters out there. Henry Hoof, um, Hard Knocks 360, a lot of big guys out there in that gym. You know, Tyrone Spong, Rashad Evans. Andy Rumble Johnson, um, the Menace, Mr. Bermudez. Uh, you, you used to be black zillions now, they have their own thing, the Hard Knock 365, which is Henry Reeves. And even though it's hard to get boxing sparring, a lot of MMA guys bring it. They have this warrior mentality, even though I'm a boxer, they bring it, you know? So it's a great camaraderie that I grew up around with martial arts and Muay Thai, where everybody trying to help each other. And it's a different vibe, you know? New York, this weather in New York, we all know, suck. You know, so I had to get out of Florida, and that's why I want to be and be able to train all year round and go outside of it and, and just have fun, you know. So my next thing is actually opening a camp in Belize, you know, where I go back to my, my home country and just train in the sun and run on the beach and drink coconut water, you know. So that's you another thing. Fight MMA? Um, no. I don't, I don't have no plans to fight MMA right now. Like I said, I'm number two, number one contender after this fight for sure. So I think going to MMA would actually hurt my profile for me to go and do that sport. Now, if I'm, when I'm world champion and I beat a couple guys up, we got a hundred million dollar contract by Bellator UFC, then that makes sense, you know. But right now, it wouldn't make sense for me to go do it man. Brother Terrell, this is uh, James Bell here from the Boxing Source. What's good? I'm good, man. I'm good. Just wanted to ask a question about your uh, overall stamina for this particular fight. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, it was mentioned before that you came in at 304.4 pounds. But how did you feel inside the ring 
uh, there, like going into round six, seven, and then over to round 12? Um, my stamina felt overall good. Like I said before, there was times where I feel like I clicked with some good shots where I had to kind of, you know, adjust and reevaluate myself and just take a little time to see what I got in front of me. You know, it wasn't that I was exhausted. It was just that I didn't want to get clipped clip with kind of shots. I wanted to just kind of relax, get my breathing back, just figure out exactly what I have in front of me. And that's what I did. I think between sixth, seventh, and eighth round, I kind of got hit with a couple shots, but then I kind of readjusted myself. You know, but my stamina felt good. Like I said, we spawned 12, 15 rounds in the gym with guys that's undefeated, you know what I mean? Like, all these guys have sparring partners, but they have seven, eight losses. It's a lot different when you spar a guy that have losses, like guys undefeated, like Adam Kowanaki, the number one amateur in the, in the country. These guys are trying to book my butt, but these are my boys, so I know when I'm doing something wrong, they're gonna tell me how to fix it. So, like, my stamina is good, and I said the main thing is, is being able to be tired and be able to think. You know, a lot of guys get tired and they can't think. They start throwing wild shots like Beyonce Wilder. Or AJ, who just sit there and the referee stop a fight when he land one or two shots. Nah, we ain't doing that. Everything you see, I've, every fight I've had so far in the last year, I had to work to get these wins. The draw Washington fight. How was I fighting a draw until I stopped him? Because he's an Al Heyman guy, Al Heyman card. I beat his behind every round, but it was a draw to the point I stopped him. Morris Watt, another tough guy. Beat his butt, stopped him and nine. So I had to work for everything I got so far, man. Cool. Thanks, Joe. Cheeseburger, let's go. Team Jarrell of United Austin, his publicist, and Michael McCulley, his manager.